Here we go. Steve Bickham, B-I-C-C-U-M. Steve, I'm calling you out. Uh, commendable for a rookie. Only problem I see on the picnic is you started on the presentation side. Coming from a former retail meat cutter, all in all, not bad. As for the knot, you're so close, and I could have saved you about 12 feet of string with almost the same knot. Hi guys, welcome to TCR, the Crouch Ranch. Uh, today we are on location, <laughs> from vacation. On um, location, on vacation. Yes. Ooh. We're about to head down to the pool here in a little bit, but we thought we would discuss a little bit about the, the comments that people leave on our channel and kind of how the channel got started and... And yeah, and, and what the channel really is. I don't think we've ever really talked about what is the Crouch Ranch and, and specifically what is our channel. The first couple of videos that I shot, I had no intention of like blowing up a big old YouTube channel. I was butchering my own animals on the property and I thought, you know, more people should be doing this. More people should try to do this themselves. So that was where the channel started. I wanted to share with people, hey, you can do this yourself. It's okay if you don't do it perfect. And that's how the channel started. I want to read a couple of comments actually from, you know, one of the earlier butchery videos. So Steve, uh, yes, I, I, I really appreciate a professional telling me that that's commendable for a rookie because I very much am a rookie. Uh, Jennifer Sweeney, Mike, Yay. I love how you have your own style about the way you process your hog meat. It doesn't matter if it's professional, uh, but how you make it informative. Love it. Uh, keep up the great work. And you know what? We are trying to make it, a, uh, that, that is one of the huge um, purposes behind the channel is trying to make things informative. Jerry, uh, Jerry Gann, I love this. My meat cutting skills are really lacking. Hope to see more of this in the future. Uh, yes, we do hope to do more of those in the future. We've done a few lamb now and I haven't filmed any of that and I apologize, I will. The butchery is, is really how this channel started, but you know, after, after doing a couple of butchery videos, uh, we decided to do a review video on, you know, a chicken plucker. It went slightly viral. It was, it was crazy. It was weird. <laughs> it was weird. It had no reason for it to, but, but that was kind of like the turning point for me. So me being an analytic, um, I started looking at things and I started studying YouTube algorithms and, and I started- For hours and hours and hours on end. Right. I was like, well, let's see. If I put a picture of a piece of meat laying on a counter and a knife, nobody clicks on it. If I put a picture of me, nobody clicks on it. I put a picture of you standing next to a chicken plucker, all of a sudden people click on it. So this brought me back around to the whole study of that word clickbait, right? By uh, definition, a thumbnail is clickbait. It doesn't matter what you're putting in it, you're trying to draw people in to choose your video over the video that's being served up next. Right. So. Every thumbnail is clickbait. It Every doesn't thumbnail. matter what's in it. Then you can get into the whether or not you should have used that bait. And that's where, you know, people are using a, a, an image that's not even in the video. And that's the clickbait that probably people should stay away from. I literally pull an image out of the video and use it as the main image. So anyway, I'm not going to talk too long about clickbait because it's always, look, it's always going to be a subject that people are going to talk about. Right. But what's funny is when people click on the video, watch at least some portion of the video, then engage with the video. All these things are good for our, the algorithms, by the way. They engage with the video, and then they accuse us of uh, using, using clickbait. Using me as clickbait. That's my favorite. Yeah, and I'm using like, her. Whoa. and I'm like, like I'm. It's, it's funny to me because it's like, it gives the impression that he's got me locked in a basement and he only pulls me out. We don't even have a basement. I know, we're, you know, it's California, it's we don't have a basement. Yeah, he's got me locked away somewhere and he just drags me out for the occasional YouTube, YouTube video. video thumbnail. Right. And it's like, no, that's not, I'm participating in this too, hello. What we have going on there is as much or more hers than it is mine. All day, every day, she's working with the animals, she's taking, she's, you know, she's doing all the stuff that has to be done every day. And this is like a passion for her. So, and you'll notice that in the channel because the channel started to evolve the more she got involved in it after we started going in. Depends on what we're doing a video on. If we're doing a video about livestock or, you know, how to get ready for your chickens, then that's all me. Cause he would be like, I don't know, you get an egg. 
Like he would like on like I mean he knows now, but like he's that's not <laughs> his an egg. that's like not his jam. You give me an egg, I'm gonna fry it. Right? Like that's not his jam. Just like for me, if he's doing a video on gardening, I'm like so checked out because gardening does not like I just doesn't it's not my jam, right? But so we Speaking have, of jam, we've done some videos we have on jam. We've done too. videos on jam. And that kind of falls to both of us because that's sort of you know, cooking. The kitchen is a shared world for us. Cooking yeah. is a shared world. And like, you know, as far as like the butchering goes, like I, we both, if you know, if we're doing poultry, it's pretty much 50-50. Like we can do, like I do some, he, he does some of it, I do some of it as far as the birds go. When it comes to, you know, the quadrupeds, you know, he does the majority of it and I'm more of like the runner and the helper. And then I do the grinding of whatever is going to be ground and made into sausage or ground into lean pork or whatever. I do all of that. And then like, you know, like the building, like when we built, well, we built a lot of stuff we there, but, stuff. but the one video that we did, in fact, I saved some comments from it, was the turkey coop. We did some building there and she enjoys painting. So it's like, why not have her do the painting, right? Right. And then, um, you know, I always do, like I've done like our red kitchen cabinets that are in the house that a lot of people comment on. I like doing stupid stuff like that. Like so there was a stuff. video where we built this turkey coop uh, and, um, and after I got the rafters up, Sid then went through to paint the rafters. Um, Sean McGregor, <clears throat> I don't know, just wondering, wouldn't it have been easier to have painted all the flat surface and let the wood dry and then put it up? Guess that would have been a waste of paint though. She replied, I refer, I prefer doing it that way, but Mike just brings home lumber and starts building. So, so look, the reality is yes, uh, had we built these rafters, laid them out, painted them, and then put them up, uh, the painting job would have been easier. I didn't have time for that. I was on a, I was on a time scale. I had somebody there to help me put the rafters in place. We built the rafters, we put them up. We didn't have time to paint them first, you know? And one thing that I don't do as well as some people do is Wait. plan my project from beginning to end. Hallelujah, he knows that admitting it is the first step. And let me tell you why. <laughs> because I am a badass improviser. He is. However, sometimes lack of planning on his part then creates problems on mine because my job is usually the finishing up part of things. Right. And so then I have to then get creative in how to finish it because then it makes my portion of the task like, trickier. You, if you saw the drawings, I wish I still had them, of what the chicken coop was going to look like before I started it, You'd be amazed because I drew it all out. I planned it all out and, and I had this whole design concept of how it was going to be and how the roofs were going to be and how the, the roof was going to be and how the nesting boxes and what height off the ground. And then I started building it. I started changing the build while I was building it and it turned out awesome. It's, a, it's an awesome chicken coop. It's nothing like what it was going to be when I first started it. Right. And that's the way a lot of my projects go. Um, since the chicken coop, I have backed off on my prior planning though on purpose. Like the turkey coop, I really only knew how big it was going to be when I first well, started. And now it. he's learned to ask me too, like, what do you need for the animal? Like, what what is going to make this easier? And I'll say, well, hey, I need like the brooder. I was like, I need a door here. Like, I can't, like, I need access on this side and I need this to be this tall because he's looking at it like, I just need to hold birds. And I'm looking at it like, well, I need to be able to do X, Y, and Z in there and be able to access the birds and be able to get in on the other side to let them out. And, Where's know? the door going to be? Which right. direction is the door going to open? Is it, if you open it out, is it going to open out into an area where it's now too close to the chicken coop, coop, thereby blocking your ability? All these little details we right. do talk about. But then I start building. One viewer had commented, um, uh, this is beekeeping NWF, be, beekeeping NWF, yeah. Uh, don't know why they are painting the frame, the roof will cover it up. So, because only half of this thing actually had a roof, and that roof then uh, was only just the roof, directly below the roof, it's wide open. So, there's still moisture, you know. You don't want that wood getting right. moist. You want it protected with a coat of paint. Yeah, so that's and, and why. to be able to clean it off well too, you know, to be able to hose it off, to be able to, you know, make it last longer. If you seal that wood, if you coat it with something, it's gonna hold up better over time and be easier to clean in between. So protect your wood, that's the moral of the story. Protect your wood. Protect your wood.
Wrap it up. <laughs> Moving on. Um, Ricky Melloster. Ricky, we should call you Ricky. Uh, nice build, guys. Teamwork is where it's at. Well done. Thank you, Ricky. Um, huh. Here's a good one. I can't tell you how many comments we've gotten over the last year, randomly. Uh, um, there's chairs on the roof. Oh, What's yeah. up with that? Chairs on the roof. So, <laughs> so the chairs on the roof. So the chairs are Go on round the, and round. Yeah, so the chairs on the roof, um, we have a view of the fireworks for 4th of July from that part of the roof. You can see it really well. <laughs> there's a about a thousand square foot sunroom. Yeah. Uh, it's like 12 foot deep and the length of the back of the house that has almost a flat roof. I have every intention of building a deck on top of that at some point, possibly doing some hydroponic growing up there. It's a cool flat spot. We took some chairs up there one time. We left them up there because why take them down? We may want to take them up there again. And people find that intriguing. Yeah, why are there chairs on the roof? I must know. So That's why there's chairs on the roof. There's chairs on the roof because I put them there. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Sid, love your one-liners. They're so funny. Yes. You know what? I have my moments. We don't script a lot. No. And I have to edit myself before it comes out a lot. Sometimes and I, I have to edit that. her after. Yeah. So, because I cuss like a sailor on leave, don't I? I try to leave as much of it in there as I can, even when she's taking a dig at me. Um, that's cool. Uh, subject is we don't script very much. Um, we don't have any notes in front of us right now. Um, some videos I will script out like uh, what I want the scenes to look like. Or like the garlic video. <laughs> or the garlic video. That was a scripted video. That was all his uh, brainchild on that one. So, okay. We might as well talk about the garlic video. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. At 3 million views now. So we did this video just as a goof. He was like, hey, I've got this funny idea. Let's just do it. And like, like what if I'm out working in the garden yeah. and like you walk out in a bikini and have all these excuses why you can't help and just like be this prissy Madonna. And honestly, I thought it was going to get like 20 views and a couple people would yeah. chuckle at it. And it went like crazy and we got like a lot of people thought it was funny, but an equal amount of people were like, Dude, how awful you use her for that, and da 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 da, and like, just yeah. It was, yeah. It was a lot of mixed emotions. It's unfortunate <laughs> that that video it got well as there, many yeah. views as it got like because it did stereotype least, us a little. Yes, and it's one of our least favorite videos. Some of our favorite videos have the least amount of views, and it, yeah. like our junk drawer video, we love that video. It's right. funny. It's us. It's like very just random. He literally just turned on the camera and we were shooting a different video. Yeah, and, and you went to get a you went to get a something uh, out of the drawer, and it, he was like, "What's in?" And here? I was like, eh, "Let's talk about this." Yeah, and that's one of my favorite videos, just because it's such a goof. But like, and there's a couple other ones that I can't think of right now that are some of my more favorite ones that I'm like, no, nobody watches those. So it's just, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it is what it is. But, you um, don't know when you, you when you have know. a YouTube channel. You don't know when you yeah. post a video what video is going to do well. You can start to predict things based on previous videos. Um, you know, clearly, a lot of times, you know, when if I post a video with her standing in a bikini as the thumbnail, it's going to get a lot of clicks. Now, are those clicks necessarily the clicks that we want? Look, let's be real. She's an attractive woman. She looks great in a bikini. We don't say, hey, go put on a bikini for this video. That's not what we do, except for that stupid damn garlic video. Yeah. Um, and the, the coffee snap one. We oh, the coffee snap. We did that on purpose. Because, yeah, and we did yeah. that on purpose because we were doing Black Rifle Coffee. Yeah. And hello. There was a comment. Do you hello. have the comment? That, well, there's been several comments. Yeah, for about like, oh, you stole that from yeah. him. And it's like, Did you oh. get Matt Bess's permission to do the bikini yeah, snap? Like, Dude, well, it was a joke. We were reviewing yeah. Black Rifle Coffee. Yeah. Hello, if you don't know, Matt Best and Black Rifle Coffee. Hello. Yeah. Like, so we was, don't do bikini snaps in our channel yeah. elsewhere. It was a joke. We did it on that video <laughs> because Matt Best is affiliated yeah. with Black Rifle Coffee. So, so it was a whole so, thing. But yeah. So no, y'all, we're not stealing Matt Best's. Bikini snap ideas. Yeah. See there, I just snapped and nothing happened. So 
Ha. Huh. There you go. Well, I was already in a bikini, so. Oh, that's true. It could have been dangerous. <laughs> I could have just put you in a burka. <laughs> right? Yeah, and that's the other thing. It's like people get on me. It doesn't, honestly, it doesn't matter what I'm wearing in a video. I could be wearing leggings and a tank top, or I could be wearing a sweater and jeans, and I will get some comment about something about either that I'm not in a bikini and I get harped on if I'm wearing too many clothes in the winter videos. Right. When I am wearing, you know, weather attire, appro weather appropriate weather attire. Why does that not sound right? I don't know. Uh, anyway. Um, dressed for the occasion. When I'm dressed for the occasion, then I still get people being haters and I'm like, wow, like saying, you know, how, you know, how can you wear a bikini or how can you wear shorts and a tank top? And it's like, hello. Like, you know, I live in California. Yeah, I live in shorts and a tank top, like, nine months out of the year. That's Bottom line is, if you're going to have a YouTube channel, you're going to be out there on social media. Right. Um, and we get it. Like, people are going to, you, you got to have thick skin. We do. Yeah. And it's it's just funny, like, some of the some of the comments and the, the things that people will say about him or about me. And it's just Oh, like, the comments about me. Oh, yeah. The old, ugly man with the young, I mean, like, you know, I know. like, I honestly never respond to those. But that's okay, because somebody the other day said that I looked much older close up than I do far away. So it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> There was one comment uh, where the guy didn't actually beat me up for being an ugly old man. Which I don't with, get, With uh, a hot young girl. Yeah, we get that a lot. And, and or like, is that your sister? Really, yeah. you guys? Come on. I, but you know, I don't, I don't let it get under my skin. I it's don't like, either, but it's But here's so one funny. from Organic Dank. Just roll it. <laughs> That's his name. Just roll it. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> with all the hard work this man does for his family, he deserves a hot wife. Beautiful home, beautiful family, beautiful life. And she replied, thank you. Um, Cheers to that. You know, <sighs> we're not shallow. Um, turns out she's hot. That's cool. But, you know, we've been together for a long time. And we're working on a whole other video on that, so we won't get too deep into yeah. that. But... Um, but bottom line is, we've been together for almost 20 years. You know, right. I was I was in my early 20s. He was in his late 20s. Um, I was a musician. He was a musician. He was the lead singer in a band. Like, every woman wanted him. And, like, I was this shy, you know, person that, like, you know, and we Spoiler just... Spoiler alert! Well, we just hit it, we just hit yeah. it off. And it just, you know, and so, but time <clears throat> has passed. We've both gotten older and changed and whatever. I mean, that's... That's the I've nature lost some of the relationship. Gain some belly. Yeah. You know? Look, you know, just, just to get back on uh, on the YouTube channel and, and on the Crouch Ranch, we we very much appreciate all the people that comment, the positive comments, um, the questions. Um, we love the idea that we might be helping somebody. Uh, with uh, you know explaining how we do something or sharing something you know um, and then the negative comments look there's always going to be haters they're part of the algorithm so yeah. so here's the thing so even the haters help us. that you jokers don't understand when you're <laughs> out there being a hater when you engage with our video and and accuse us of uh, being clickbait or being whatever and she then responds, and you then respond again, and then somebody else sees that and chimes in and calls you a jerk, and you then go try to defend yourself. And so all those engagements with that video are checking boxes in the algorithm that's deciding whether or not to serve this video up to other people. So thank you for being a Richard. Don't worry about us. We're not like on Suicide Watch because people are being mean to us on yeah. the internet. We're not curled up in the corner chewing on our hair, rocking back and forth, crying. That's a picture. Right? Yeah. yeah. Once you start a YouTube channel and you open up your life to the outside world of people who don't know you outside of the one little video that they maybe saw of you and the way that they instantly judge and feel the need to spew that on you, whether it's positive or negative, right. um, it's interesting. It's just interesting because it's not something that you expect and it's not something that you realize until you kind of get into it. But so. I also don't judge back. I don't think that... Oh, I do occasionally. Individuals. But I don't think that, you know, everybody out there that's watching our channel feels this way about us. 
a lot of times people that are content with something will never talk about it, will never comment on it, will never, and people that have a strong negative opinion always will. So when we get a lot of negative comments about something, about, oh, you know, you're holding that wrong, you don't know what you're doing, your boning knife should be five inches instead of seven. Why'd you put you're... bumper stickers on a Ferrari? That's right. the one I get all the yeah. time. Bumper stickers, bumper Ferrari. Stickers. All I heard was, your wife's a Ferrari, so thank you. <laughs> um, but, you know, when we get all these, I, you know, I don't assume that everybody thinks these negative things. I assume that uh, the keyboard warriors with the negative thoughts tend to comment more. Right. We're going to go down to the pool now and have some family time. So don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell so you get the notifications.